Faith. What is faith? I believe. A trust. An assurance. Confidence. Faith in God is the ability to, at least in partial, understand God. We can never understand Him fully, but it's that desire to be in relationship in order to receive understanding of who God is through Jesus Christ. It's about having a relationship with the divine, being in communication with God's Holy Spirit, and worship that which we cannot tangibly touch or see in the same way that we can have a relationship with and see our friends and our family members. <coughs> Yes, we can even be in relationship with our friends and family members without seeing them directly as we communicate with them on the phone. Just because we can't physically see them with our eyes doesn't mean that they don't exist. If you receive a package in the mail and the card attached says that it came from a specific friend or family member, you would know who sent it to you even though you did not physically see them place the order, put it in the box, or ship it. In a similar manner, God sends us gifts every day. We see these gifts, which we may call nature, in the beauty of a butterfly or a weeping willow tree. God sends us these gifts, even though we didn't physically see him make nature with our own eyes. We can discern the difference between what God has designed and what humankind has designed. Humankind has not been able to replicate the intricacies of the human hand, or the skin that covers our bodies, or a brand new heart that would function with the same ability to beat with seemingly no input device. When someone's kidneys fail, they have to go through extensive measures to clean the toxins out of their bodies, something God designed to be almost seamless in most people whose kidneys are functioning normally. Paul writes about faith in his letter to the Hebrews, which, our epistle, which is our epistle lesson for today. Strong faith has been tested through time. It's through the struggles and the trials that God brings us through for us to be able to see his goodness, his mercy, and his steadfast love. Faith is something we build upon. We are not born with faith. Faith is bestowed to us by our creator, our father, provider, refuge, and protector. <clears throat> Perfect faith casts out fear, which is the opposite of faith. Fear can be destructive. Many people walk through life with fear that has been diagnosed as phobia, whether it is for spiders, or snakes, or heights, or relationships, or people, or elevators, or closed spaces, or sitting in a room with one's back to the door. Uh-oh, somebody is shivering. Does that mean I mentioned a phobia? <laughs> closed spaces. <laughs> Today's epistle recounts people of faith. The Hebrews walked through the Red Sea as if walking on dry <coughs> land by faith. I'm sure this was an epic event. I can't even imagine what it would have been like to see these waters separated and the people venture through it while God's hands held back this huge mass of liquid from engulfing them. The Hebrews had faith. Faith enough to follow Moses when he parted the Red Sea with his mighty staff. This epic event is in contrast to the Egyptians, who had no faith in mighty God. And so when they pursued the Hebrews, they were swallowed up as the winds receded and the sea once again maintained its original boundaries. Their own power and their own strength were no match for Almighty God. The Canaanites' wall in Jericho was no match for God either, as Joshua led his army around the city once every day for six days, and then on the seventh day, marching seven times around the city with the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant and blowing ram's horns, the Israelites raised a great shout, and the walls tumbled to the ground, leaving no protection for the inhabitants of Canaan. 
Our God is a mighty God. Our scripture lesson for today mentions Gideon as a man of faith, which he certainly was as he gathered his army from the tribes of Asher and Zebulun and Naphtali, as well as from his own tribe Manasseh, in order to meet an armed force of people of Midianites and the Amalek who had crossed the Jordan River. As Gideon listened for God's instruction, God told Gideon that he had gathered too many men, and it would be reason for the Israelites to believe that it would be by their own strength that they would defeat their enemy instead of acknowledging that God had saved them. So God instructed Gideon to send home anyone in his army that was afraid. Gideon invited any man who wanted to leave to do so. 22,000 men returned home and 10,000 remained. But this number was still too many. God then instructed Gideon to bring his army to the water and separate those who drank by lapping the water with their tongues from those who knelt down putting their hands to their mouths. Do you know which ones were sent home? The ones that lapped or the ones that brought the water to their mouth, yes. All who drank with their hands were to be sent home. This left 300 men in Gideon's army. Gideon's faith and defeat of his enemy brought peace in the land of Israel for 40 years while Gideon was alive. It's just an incredible act of um, Gideon's faith and God showing uh, God's steadfastness and his promises. The story of the Hebrews' defeat of the Canaanites led by Sisera under the prophetic leadership of Deborah and the military leadership of Barak is recounted in the book of Judges, chapter 4, and repeated in poetry in chapter 5, which is known as the Song of Deborah. The story of, story of Samson is probably a familiar one. Sue mentioned uh, Vacation Bible School, and uh, I mentioned youth group as a child, so most of you probably learned about Samson. His strength was given to him by a God Almighty, and he defeated his enemies, the Philistines, until he allowed, allowed Delilah cut his hair, and as she did so, God departed from him. There are many lessons to be learned from the biblical accounts. Putting our faith and trust in God should be first and foremost. As Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on water. But when he looked away and his faith withered, so was his ability to defy the laws of nature. The centurion soldier had enough faith in Jesus to acknowledge that just by Jesus' word from a distance, his paralyzed servant could be healed. The woman with the issue of blood for 12 years had faith that if she just touched the hem of Jesus' garment, <coughs> not even his flesh, just his hem, she would be healed, and she was. What does your faith look like? Have you seen God act in mighty ways and profound ways? I can tell you that I have seen hearing restored and life restored. I have seen the bed over get up and walk. I have seen sight restored to the blind. I've seen fear dismissed and grief relieved. I've witnessed my mother's full recovery from a stroke and craniotomy. I've experienced my dad overcoming the shadow of death more times than I can count on both hands and both feet. I know one day he will move on to his heavenly home in God's time. But for some reason, God just isn't finished building his mansion. Ultimate faith brings ultimate healing. And ultimate healing brings ultimate glory. And ultimate glory means that we will be united with Jesus Christ, the divine healer and perfecter of our faith. For those without faith, the end of, the, of life just appears to be that, the end. But for those who trust in God 
and call on the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names, we will be given the blessed assurance of a heavenly home where disease will end as well as all evil. We will be delivered at last from sin and destruction. The ironic thing is that we can't physically touch God, but when a friend or a loved one dies, faith and hope are the only things we have to hold on to, as well as each other. Trusting God's mercy and righteousness and God's promise that we will be united in the hereafter forever with them, never to lose them again. I invite you to walk with me on this journey of faith as we strengthen our walk together. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Amen.